What's going on, everybody? It is April 11th. We've got a gigantic baseball slate split almost perfectly in half. And uh, I need to hope that the Nats don't run through the Braves for the third straight day. Uh, joining me, as always, my fellow Osmo.com writer, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Not much. Uh, we had a pretty good night, I think, both of us last night. So I'm happy. To yeah, hoping to continue that momentum. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Your Braves, man, they're just getting rolled over the last couple nights. Can't really blame them, though. A couple good pitchers, Scherzer and Strasburg. A couple great pitcher, pitchers, I should say. But I'd feel uh, worse if it wasn't them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit different story today with, with A.J. Cole on the mound. So I would agree. <laughs> uh, so we're going to try to go through every game here. Um, there's some unique splits of slates between – FanDuel and DraftKings and which games are included, which games aren't. But we have them all loaded up and ready to go, so we're going to touch on everything. Um, so first half is going to be all early slate. Second half of this is going to be late slate. So if you're looking for some sort of split point, um, try the middle. <laughs> uh, we'll start with my Braves. Uh, the Nats still hosting the Braves. Four and a half run implied total for the Nats. Uh, 4.2 run implied total for the Braves. It's a 53% chance to win. AJ Cole on the hill for the Nats. Brandon McCarthy uh, going for the Braves. Um, I like Cole a lot, actually. Uh, I don't have a ton of interest in Brandon McCarthy. Not sort of the prototypical fantasy starter for me, but I think Cole looks pretty good. Where are you at? Really? Um, I'm actually on the other side. I want to. I want to stack against Cole. Okay. He's uh, he's really really bad against lefty bats, and um, you, you know, I don't think the Braves are gonna get shut down three nights in a row. This guy's a different pitcher than than Scherzer and Strasburg. He doesn't have that great K stuff. He's got a forty six percent hard contact rate against lefties since the start of twenty seventeen. So, and he starts off with four lefties in a row, and then five out of the first six. So I think, and he just got touched up by Atlanta last week, I think it was. Um, so they hit him well last time, and I'm expecting them to hit them hit him well again. So I like Albies, love Freddie Freeman, Marcakis, Tucker. Like I think all the lefties are in play for me on Atlanta. Freeman's probably one of my favorite plays on the entire slate. Yeah. So that's not a hot take. He's 5,200, but... The rest of the guys aren't that expensive. NCRT 34, Albies 38, Marquez 31, and Tucker 29. So it's not even that tough of a stack to fit in on DraftKings. Yeah, I don't know if it's just me being like outwardly pessimistic about Braves hitters. Um, I just like Cole's price. He's only 5,600 on FanDuel, um, which is almost like not even playable just because of salary structure. It is too low, but like I would use him as a second pitcher on DK in the morning or like early slate, whatever. Uh, I just don't have any confidence that like the Braves bats are going to be doing anything of value. It's just so many guys with like sub 400 projected slugging percentages. There's really like weak contact outside of Freeman. And yeah. I'm just like super, super nervous about them right now. They've been getting no, I, largely embarrassed for the past two days. No, I, I get that. I mean, I just, um, I don't know. I think Cole's going to have a really tough time against these lefties, striking him out at least. And Albies and Freeman, especially, those are the two guys I'm scared of for Cole's sake. So those are the two guys I really, really want to use. And the full stack makes sense. I can't remember if Cole is, um, if he's good or not at preventing stolen bases, but I don't have I him doubt it on this sheet right now. Just thinking about him in general, I can't imagine that he is. Yeah, and if Miguel Montero is behind the plate, he's awful at catching uh, or getting guys when they're stealing. So yeah, he's uh, that's even a, a bigger upgrade for like Inciarte and Albies. Yeah, then so that I'm clear, uh, I'm not advocating having like a lot of AJ Cole, but he would be a a flyer pitcher for me as my second starter on DK. I'd probably do like one lineup or two lineups with him in FanDuel, but he just like I need I, I just need more salary than what he's providing almost yeah. on uh, and FanDuel. 
yeah, that's very cheap for a pitcher that's a favorite. Like he can definitely pitch decently and give you five or six innings here. I'm not saying that's yeah. unlikely. Um, I just am more on the Braves side. Gotcha. So, so not a fa- not a fan of Nats bats because I think they look pretty good. Yeah. Um, well, specifically one bat, and that's Bryce Harper. Yeah. Um, but if Brian Goodwin's leading off at 2,900, he's slated to lead lead off, right? Is that what that's you? That's who I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then both both those two guys, you can play Trey Turner. You can do a, a stack, really. I don't think Brandon McCarthy's a bad pitcher. I think he's just decent, sort of on on both sides. But not a guy that I'm scared to target against. At least I don't see anything that's um, scaring me off of him. So. I like those top three guys, and then I certainly get the stack. But um, I don't know. What do you think? I like Goodwin. Uh, Twenty five hundred on Fanduel is a real nice price for a leadoff hitter against Brandon McCarthy. Yeah. Um, obviously Bryce Harper, but again, that's not that's not news. Uh, I would stack. I don't have much of a problem with it. Um, there's not anything really crazy in the early slate with regards to implied totals outside of Colorado. So, you know, the Nats look just as good as m- most other uh, lineups. You know, like every other favorite is kind of in the same sort of area. So I'd have no problem grabbing a couple Nats, but Goodwin and Harper would be my focus coming out of there. Uh, Harper, one off, I think is obviously fine. And I probably wouldn't have much from the Brave side uh, outside of Freeman, who I think looks great. 4000 on FanDuel for Freeman. Uh, is a real nice price, in my opinion. Yeah. He's great on both sites, but mm-hmm. I really love him on uh, on FanDuel. I just have very little confidence in my team right now. <laughs> I think I think they're going to get to Cole. So I hope you're right. I'd I'd happily be wrong. Um, they yeah. just maybe it's just the the high end that's the problem. No yeah. no more Strasburgs, no more Scherzer. It's just bro, let's bring in some let's bring in the bottom half of people's uh, rotations. Yeah. Ultimately, though, like there's nothing really crazy here. It's not. It's not that kind of pitching matchup. Yeah, I agree. Twins and Astros. Uh, twins with a three point seven implied total. Astros four point eight implied total. Uh, that's a thirty nine percent chance to win for the Twins. Kyle Gibson on the hill for Minnesota, and Lance McCullers going for the Astros. Um, I'm okay running out McCullers. Uh, I don't really have a ton of interest in Kyle Gibson. But I don't really love any of the pitching today at the top end. So it's kind of a tricky spot for me. I don't really know where I'm going to go. A lot of lefties in the lineup for the Twins. So what are you thinking about McCullers? Yeah, I I love McCullers as a pitcher. I, I don't really love targeting against the Twins early in the season. They've shown pretty good. Uh, pretty good plate uh, discipline, or at least above average. And like McCullers has been one of the best pitchers in the MLB so far, two starts in in terms of swings and misses and uh, swinging strike rate and stuff like that. So I think he's a good play here. He's probably a little overpriced on DraftKings, 11 1. Yeah. But like, who else are you going to pay up for besides Paxton, maybe? And then. Like, Robbie Ray isn't even on the slate for FanDuel. So, um, if you're playing on FanDuel, I don't know how you don't need at least consider McCullers tonight or this afternoon. So, um, I like him a lot. I don't think it's a great strikeout matchup, but he's got great strikeout stuff. So, there are a lot of lefties, but this could be another one of those Scherzer, uh, Strasburg plays where you just kind of bet on the talent. Now, I'm with you. There's just... I think everybody sort of looks super similar this morning Mm -hmm. from a pitching perspective. Just nobody really stands out as somebody that I want to get behind. I'm filtering this down now by uh, the early slate times. I don't know why I didn't do that before and make this a little bit easier to look at. If you're one of those crazy people that are playing the all-day slate on FanDuel, I apologize for filtering filtering this list of pitchers. But yeah, Wait, do you like – remember when they used to do the all-day slate? Yeah, I, I don't want any part of that. Yeah, I, I don't know why. People are so mad when they took that away, like on Sundays. No. I don't uh, like that. Maybe, maybe like one day a week. Like I can get it on a Sunday, but I don't want to have to pay attention to like a 12.30 start on a Tuesday and then also have guys going at 10.30 at night. 
Like, I'm, I'm yeah. good. I don't, it's not supposed to last longer than my work day. Yeah, and then you're like sweating the lineups, like on FanDuel when they didn't have late swap. Yeah. You would be like sweating the Sunday night baseball lineups if you had late guys. So I just so. remember having like Trout or something, and he sat out a game mm-hmm. in an all day slate, and it's like, cool. Like, I, I waited all day to know that the best player in my lineup wasn't going to play until six right. hours later. Yeah, so. That was just a little aside yeah. there. But. Yeah. Uh, for me, yeah, McCullers and Paxton are kind of the only two guys I could pay up for on FanDuel. Um, so, like, I I like McCullers by default, but I don't really like the amount of lefties that are in the Twins lineup today. And then it's, you know, the, the two major non-lefty bats from Minnesota are two guys that are just good kind of in general. It's not as if yeah. they've got, like, any major problem. Like, Dozier's good, Sano can make... You know, a major mistake go very, very far. So, I don't, I don't do backflips over the thought of McCullers, but he's kind of like the the best of what I can get to. Um, yeah. Astros bats, though, uh, I kind of have an affinity for, just because I don't really like Kyle Gibson. Doesn't miss enough bats to really scare me. And if you're not missing bats against that top half of the Astros lineup. The, they can be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have some respect for Kyle Gibson in that he he's a guy that, well, last year especially people liked to stack against. He kind of just was okay for a lot of starts, not necessarily for fantasy, but um, he was a little bit frustrating to stack against. But the numbers like over the last season and a couple starts aren't great. Under 20% uh, strikeout rate and – 344 Woba, 36 percent hard contact against righties. So those numbers alone, um, and then 3.7 walks per nine to righties. So I don't think he has huge splits either way. And I think you can target like the top six or seven for the Astros. Like yeah. they're they're always a team that I'm gonna be looking to stack. I don't think they'll go under owned here. No, but. Um, like Springer under 5K, Correa under 5K, uh, Bregman still 4,200. Like they didn't hit well yesterday, but uh, I do like an Astro stack and specifically those top four guys. Yeah, 4.8 implied total, you know, second highest or third highest of the of the morning slate, but the highest total outside of cores is appealing to me. Yeah. Um, Again, it's not like nothing standing out so far in these first two games is just like absolutely amazing stuff. I mean, you know, maybe Freeman, but that's just a one off. I don't see either of these two teams as, you know, somebody I would want to have a bundle of. Astros for sure, like you're paying up for a good offense, but uh, it doesn't, they don't grade out as like exceptional. Like if Gibson were a lefty or something, it'd be terrifying. And the weather here isn't great in minneapolis um which is close to where i live it's not great but it is a day game so like yesterday it was around the same temperature and it's not bad when you're when you're in the sun if it gets sunny out but (laughs) um like it 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 feels a little bit more than 40 so it's not terrible hitting weather okay but um still not great it it is pretty good pitching weather for mccullers so that's sort of a, a plus in his on his side Oh, I forgot to mention it. Not that it's at all important, but I finally grouped catcher and first base together for there you go. FanDuel. So I, I took awesome. the time to change a formula that took me 20 seconds to do. <laughs> uh, I don't want any Twins bats as one-offs for the most part. I mean, you can you can get cute and have Maurer or Rosario, but I don't. That seems like a little bit too much, like, trying to outthink the game. I agree. I just... It's a big enough slate where I don't think you have to target against McCullers, even if you're not playing him. So agreed. So yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a decent amount of McCullers. I would imagine McCullers and Paxton will will run the show for me in like the majority of any early game lineups. Oh, and one more thing I should mention. So I said that the Twins have actually been good at um, plate discipline. They've, they're actually in the top ten in terms of O swing percentage swing percentage and swinging strike rate. So I was thinking of someone else. So they haven't been as good as I thought as far as play discipline goes. Okay. So just wanted to correct that. Sounds good. I appreciate the the correction. I'm sure somebody would come into the comments and tear you apart yeah. for it. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, Cardinals and Brewers, this line doesn't exist, so I made it up. And uh, I'm going to have the Cardinals somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.7 implied runs. Brewers somewhere in that neighborhood of 3.8. But there was no line at all for this game or the next game. No totals either. Uh, If I'm right, uh, that would be a 61% chance to win for the Cardinals. Adam Wainwright on the hill for St. Louis. Uh, Junior Guerra on the hill for Milwaukee. Um, I like Wainwright a lot, if I'm right. Uh, He grades out pretty nicely. Um, you know, I wish he was the old Adam Wainwright. Not doesn't necessarily miss bats the way that he used to, but I'm not. You know, the Brewers are going to run out a a healthy group of lefties at the top of the order, uh, but there's not a ton to just love here today. So I see a lot of value in some of the the lower tier pitching in the early slate just because of the way that the top half lines up. Do you have any interest in either of these guys? Yeah, I think Wainwright would be the guy I'd look at in this game. Guerra is making his first start of the season. I think he was in the bullpen for quite a bit of the year last year. So I'm not really interested in him. He gives up a lot of hard contact against righties. And uh, St. Louis has a bunch of them that have power. And then he's got a 5.71 XFIP against lefties last year. So not really looking to play Guerra. But um, Wainwright for 6,300, he's going to be favored. We just don't know how much. Like... Like you said, he doesn't he doesn't really miss bats that well anymore. But um, I don't know. I, I think he could get the win here. And like I think the chalk build on this early slate for DraftKings is going to be McCullers and then one of these cheap guys like Wainwright or uh, Chirinos or even like Shields. He might get some ownership or Cole. So I do think Wainwright is a guy that I'm considering for my uh, second starting pitcher. Yeah, that, he grades out really well on DK. Like, he kind of separates himself from the pack in my data uh, at his price point. You think that McCullers will be significantly more chalky than Paxton? Um, I think he'll be higher owned for sure. I don't know. Like, depending on the tournament, I think McCullers will be like 30, 35, 40 some tournaments. Okay. And then Paxton will be in the... 20 to 25 range okay so i think yeah uh i'm in for hitters in this game you know particularly mm-hmm. the Cardinals side um surprise surprise i'll take some dexter fowler whose price has now climbed up to 3100 finally on FanDuel, which was you know a nice slow steady progression over the past week to 10 days um but i'm in for for a cardinal stack if need be so long as this total is anywhere near what i entered uh, i think the top half of the cardinals lineup looks pretty good and if i didn't have wainwright i'd really i wouldn't have much of a problem having some brewers either Uh, i think this game is much more likely for me to have some offense than some than some pitching on Fanduel at least yeah the, the cardinals bats look really good for me here too um Jose Martinez is a guy that I hope is in the lineup. I think he pitch hit yesterday, so I'm assuming we're going to see him in the lineup in, in some fashion yeah. today. Um, Fowler, well, we might see a little bit different of a lineup because I think this game went a bunch of innings last night. So just keep an eye on this lineup, but if it's regular, Martinez, Fowler, Carpenter, Ozuna, and Pham are all guys I really like. So the usual top five for the Cardinals. Yeah. And... I like a lot of them as one off specifically Martinez and Carpenter. And then as a full stack, like I like them all individually quite a bit. So sure. I think the Cardinals are one of my favorite stacks. Pretty good hitting weather here, too. It looks like some wind blowing out to left. So it should be good for these righties that like to pull the ball. Sign me up. I'm in yeah. for that. I loved Fam yesterday. He made it into the spotlight hitters, and then uh, lineups came out and he was out. So I had to. He got, he got a nice strike through and updated into Dexter Fowler, so I was happy with that. Yeah. But and yeah, Martinez I, was out, too. Yeah. I would take the lefty bats on the Brewers, too. Um, yeah, Thames and Shaw for me, really. And then Sogard, if you need a punt. This guy is. Sogard is, like, one of the most tilting guys to go against. Like, when you're, like if you start Wainwright, like it's a very real possibility that Sogard just has, like, an 11-pitch walk to start the game. <laughs> Because he, he's just so pesky. 
Like 340 on base percentage, 355 slugging projected yeah. from Steamer, which is you don't you don't see that thin of a gap all that often. He's just like a very old fashioned baseball player. Yeah. <laughs> so he would have been a spectacular second baseman in like 1978. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's what I think of him too. So. Yeah. So uh, I'm fine with um, buying a lottery ticket on Wainwright on FanDuel if you don't want to pay up for any of the the top guys. I think Wainwright looks like a nice second option on DK, but ultimately I would prefer the bats in this game more than the pitching. Yeah. I mean Wainwright just just a price play for me. Like I don't think he has any big k upside but the brewers do have some strikeouts in that lineup outside of sogard really white Sox and rays uh very similar totals right now Uh, also no line uh 59 chance to win for the white Sox. i've got it at 4.7 uh implied runs rays 3.8 implied runs it's James Shields going for Chicago and Yanni Chirino going for uh, the Rays. Uh, not a huge fan of the pitching in this one, uh, particularly Shields. Not a guy that I ever really get happy about having. Um, although I don't really have too much fear of the Rays lineup, which is honestly atrocious. Um, I'd be fine having some uh, White Sox bats in this situation, but. I, I'm, I'm ignoring the pitching. Um, where are you at? The pitching, well, okay. I do have interest in Chirinos, actually. He's 4,500 yeah, on DraftKings. Crazy. And he had a actually pretty good outing against Boston. Like he, you know, nothing spectacular, but he went five innings through, he got four strikeouts. The swinging strike rate has been good for him in both of his appearances. He threw um, six innings against Boston in. It looks like, or no, he threw he threw four innings in his first relief appearance. Then he started and threw five. So I think he can give you five innings here, and he's been really good against righties so far. He's got a thirty three percent K rate. Obviously, that's a very small sample, but yeah, we know these White Sox. They're full of righties that strike out. It's like um, Matt Davidson and Brayu. Tim Anderson, like these guys all strike out near 20, 25, 30% some of them. So I think Chirinos could provide a little bit of upside for that price on DraftKings. Yeah, uh, the $4,500 price point is, is kind of wild. Um, I just, if the White Sox are a favorite like I think they would be, I just have a hard time seeing him getting to like anything substantial. I don't see the volume there for him. Like, I'd much rather just save, like, who would I prefer? I mean, like, I'd prefer Shields just in that game in particular. I'd rather Cole on DK. Okay. Um, mostly because I think the Rays are just so bad. Like, I don't... He's going to have so little opportunity to really accumulate anything. Yeah, I mean, the on, highest projected slugging in the Rays lineup is 433. Like, it's they have only three guys with a projected slugging percentage above 400. Yeah, it's definitely. I don't think he's got a good chance to get a win here, but four, which five, obviously matters more on yeah. FanDuel than DK. Yeah. So, like four or five innings, if he gives you 12 DK points, you're thrilled for 4,500. And then you've got oh, on DraftKings, you can stack Coors, you can stack. Astros, you could stack who, like pretty much whoever you want with McCullers and Chirinos. So that's that's why I like him. I don't think he's going to have some spectacular outing, but I think he just could be decent enough at that price. I think we could end, if we look at this later, we're going to end up seeing the same sort of scenario we saw yesterday when we ran it, where you can have McCullers and let's say Wainwright and still get to most of what you would want yeah i think he's just gonna create too much money almost oh yeah that that could be it i haven't played around with lineup construction yet that's just it's just a guess though um so i like white Sox hitters at least the top half of it um just because i think they can get to him early 
Uh, so Moncada, Garcia, Abreu. I just have like a weird... I, I don't normally love getting so much righty on righty in a stack. But it's just one of those weird like I got a feeling type things. Moncada would be the guy for me. Yeah. He's the guy. I, I really like his individual matchup. So 4,200. If you're not playing Chirinos, I think is a really awesome play at, at second base. Yeah, I think he looks great. But if he's leading off, which I would expect him to be leading off, uh, I, I love him there. 3,400 on FanDuel. Um, more than happy to have him. Let's see where he, la where he lands here. Yeah, he's... Ooh, close the pitchers. That's not right. Something's wrong there. So he's... There we go. <laughs> that looks a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I, I would be all over Moncada as probably one of my favorite second basemen, if not my favorite second baseman of the early slate. Yeah. Um, raise bats. Uh, I mean, I don't like Shields. Like, he's really, really bad, but they don't have any good hitting. <laughs> right. I think you can make a case for Shields here. Pretty pretty easily, like I'd hate myself he, for it too. Yeah, but he's fifty four hundred, and they don't like the Rays. Don't have really any good bats. He's still over twenty percent K rate against righties over the last year, and like Gomez and Cron and Duffy and Wilson Ramos, like Echeverria, he could strike some of these guys out and just be okay. He's got a better chance to get a win. Um. I don't know. The Rays are, they're just awful. Yeah. If you just go down that lineup, you, there's just not much you like. Maybe Wilson Ramos, or um, what's his price on DraftKings? 2,800. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Ramos is the guy that, that I like a little bit. I agree. And then outside of that, like, there's I can't no see myself pop. playing. Yeah. I can't see myself playing Gomez or no. definitely not Matt Duffy. Kiermeyer, if he's in the lineup for 3,000, is an all right play, but not someone I'm like pumped to play either right he's 2300 on FanDuel, so like i get a flyer there is a lefty righty matchup against you know a guy that has been become a shell of his former self but yeah i don't i just don't want to hate watch the white Sox Rays game hoping for like the best part of it right like you gotta be you gotta one get this game right and then two get these clowns right and like that's just a double dose of really difficult <laughs> stuff yeah. to do like i don't want to be like oh what i really need here is malik smith to get a single i'm just like okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna sign off now yeah <laughs> uh -oh, what did i just accidentally click on okay we're good uh let's get out of this game because it's gross sweet royals and mariners uh royals 3.8 run implied total. Mariners, 4.7. Looking very similar to the last couple of games. 41% uh, chance to win for the Royals. Danny Duffy on the hill for Kansas City. James Paxton going for Seattle. Uh, I like Paxton a lot. He grades out as probably my best uh, raw total guy on um, in my numbers. I prefer McCullers personally. Uh, but they'll probably be relatively balanced as I run things through Fantasy Cruncher. Um, what are you thinking about on Paxton? I like Paxton as a pitcher. This and it's a it's a pretty good matchup against KC, a team with not that much power that you're scared of. Maybe Soler and um, Mustakis, but it's lefty lefty for Mustakis. Yeah, so, that, that's that's not the best for him. Yeah, um, I'm really not just not scared of KC really. The one thing that is scaring me is the wind that's blowing out. It looks like 20 miles an hour out to left center. Whew. So for, for two lefties, like we could see some runs here. If, if these guys are giving up any fly balls, like I'd much rather play Paxton than Duffy here. Yeah. But I think I prefer McCullers over Paxton just because it's better weather for pitching. I hear that. Yeah, if that wind's blowing out to left center like that, uh, Soler might hit a ball 800 feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's got some power, and then yeah, terrifying like, forearms. Yeah, Maryfield, I guess, is yeah. another guy that I would look at. Yeah, but... I don't want to. I would never. I wouldn't be stacking up the Royals. Uh, no, I don't think it's that spot. 
and I don't really have like a, an overwhelming amount of interest in the Mariners. Um, you know, the primary bats that I would want from Seattle would all be in a lefty lefty matchup. So like, I like Cano a lot less. I like Seager a lot less. You know, you could talk me into Hanager, I guess. Um, it's not really like a spot that I love all that much. Where are you thinking on Mariners? Me too. I think that Hanager I really like against a lefty here when blowing out. Yeah. It seems like he's got a pretty good shot at hitting a home run. And then Segura, yeah. I like him a little bit. His price is good on DraftKings for 3700 And then if I was using a lefty against Duffy, I think it would be Cano. Yeah. I just I play Cano probably too much. I haven't <laughs> played a lot this year just because I'm in down to one lineup, but he hits lefties pretty well. So he's a guy that I would use if you want to go two, three, four. Yeah. But like I just wish there were more righty bats in this game to take advantage of that wind. Agreed. So. We, and you know who knows we could see that when the lineups actually drop but for right now um it just doesn't again it's just it's another game where like i don't feel like all the pieces align like i just right. i like little bits and pieces of it I, I i need this to turn into like some smorgasbord where i grab a little bit from every game i think i'm not loving any stacks outside of really the astros and that one's more forced than anything else yeah Cardinals, I guess. Cardinals, Astros, and then Coors if you're playing DraftKings. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're going to get into that right now. Uh, Rockies and Padres. 6.2 implied run total for the Rockies. 5.3 for the Padres. Just monstrous. 58% um, chance to win for the Rockies. Uh, German Marquez going for Colorado. Luis Perdomo going for San Diego. Um, I'm gonna. I don't even think we probably need to speak at all about the pitching. No, just besides saying that we want to target against them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's about it. Like, uh, I don't mind Marquez in general, but it's not happening here when the with this kind of implied total. So it's it's a hitting game. Um, Padres pricing on Fanduel is still relatively depressed, so that would be the direction that I would want to look more than anything. Um, if you want the Rockies, it totally makes sense. You know, Perdomo is not a guy to be super worried about, particularly in Coors Field, uh, but you're going to have to pay the premium for it. So did anybody stand out to you when, on your first pass? Uh, Blackman, he's 5,700, probably going to be one of the most owned players yeah. on the DraftKings slate. Definitely. And for good reason. So Arenado, you can use against a righty or lefty. Obviously, you prefer him against the lefty. And then Para, one of my favorite plays in this game as well for 3,500. Okay. Weirdly, only 3,500 in a righty lefty. Perdomo is going to really struggle with these lefties, and I think he's going to struggle with the entire lineup, really, uh, with that sinker that he throws. Just not going to sink as well in Coors, and he throws a curve to righties, too, and that's not going to curve as well in Coors just because of the thin air. So I think he's going to get crushed here. I'm probably stacking Coors for the third slate in a row. <laughs> specifically the Rockies yeah the 6.2 implied total is is monstrous um I really like Arenado tonight like I like I just like a Colorado stack on FanDuel it looks really nice if you're into one of those crazy early slates um Blackman is you know as, as prime of a spot as you can get lefty righty matchup top of the order like you'd be very surprised with an offer in that scenario yeah love love the rockies uh but my focus if i were on fanduel would be towards san diego again not that i find their bats to be spectacular but they're just underpriced like three thousand twenty nine hundred three thousand three thousand twenty seven hundred. 3000 2700 like you just can't there's no reason that their pricing is so n neutered for this scenario so i I love Margot again today. I loved him yesterday. Um, I'm fine with Perella. Uh, Hosmer now looks significantly better. I, I'm, I'm fine going at least top three uh, for San Diego. Um, did you take a look at them at all? Yeah, Hosmer. Uh, one of my favorite plays on the slate. First base is usually deep. 
but I think he might be my top first baseman going up against Marquez. And then you can steal on Marquez as well. So Perella and Margot, the top three for San Diego are the guys that I'm really looking at. Okay. Yeah, we're on the same page then. Pricey yeah. is not as – I mean, that's just – like everybody is just so cheap. Hosmer at 4300 on DK compared to like – they don't have a. There's not a good one to one comp up there. Like Hosmer shouldn't be like a Brady's forty dollars cheaper than Story. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't understand it. I don't understand the pricing a lot, and that's one that I don't. That I really don't get on this slate. He's going to be probably pretty chalky because it's a good matchup for him, and it's in Coors. Yeah. So. Did you but look? I'm fine. The Padres won that game last night, right? They did. Okay. Yeah. I just I know how Margot did because I had so much of them. I didn't really look into much else. Yeah, they won. I think five to two. That sounds right. The Rocky like story hit a home run in the in the first inning, and then they didn't do anything else really. I think. So yeah, uh, avoid the pitching. Surprise, surprise. And then uh, you know, pretty much grab whatever hitting you want. You'll be you should be pretty happy. The implied total is ginormous for the mm-hmm. early games. Yeah. Um, Giants and D-backs. And I fixed the formula that makes the Diamondbacks jack this stuff up. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be a great day. Re- really getting something done. Yeah, fixing everything. Yeah. Uh, right now I have this game at 3.7 implied total for the Giants, 3.7 for the D-backs. It's 51% chance to win for the Giants. I know, people. Three, 3.7 is the same number. There's some rounding involved. There's more digits. I keep it clean. Uh, Andrew Suarez apparently going for the Giants. Robbie Ray going for the D-backs. Uh, Suarez isn't in the player pool on either site, so uh, don't try to roster him. You'll fail. Um, and if we want to look at Robbie Ray, get ready to pay up on DK. Um, I get why his price is there. You know, he's obviously really good, mm-hmm. and it's a good matchup. You know, the Giants' bats are not somebody that are going to be, like, super scaring me, as evidenced by that implied total. But I don't really like the idea of paying all the way up for Robbie Ray today. It's it's tough. I mean, Corbin dominated San Francisco yesterday, and but for five innings at least. He had nine Ks through five, and... I, was, I talked about yesterday how impatient the Giants have been this year. And Ray is a dominant pitcher when he's on. So I think he's this is a payup to be contrarian spot. If you're maybe if you're not stacking Coors or you're stacking Padres and you can afford Ray up over Paxson and McCullers, I think it's a pretty good tournament play here, actually. So something point. I'm gonna yeah, something I'm gonna look at at least to see if I can fit in Ray on my roster because I think he's got one of if not the highest um, raw point projection outside of McCullers. So I think he's going to be substantially lower owned. I would agree with the the lower owned portion of it, um, just because it, it feels like McCullers and Paxson are better values. Mm-hmm. Um, love the matchup, though. I, I don't, I'm not terribly concerned with the Giants' offense. They are running very heavy righty to start. You know, they've got... Belt and Crawford bang down at the bottom. So, you know, if th- that could be a little tricky for them. Um, Austin Jackson at 2100 on on FanDuel intrigues me slightly as part of a stack of all these righty guys at the top. But, like, the last thing I want to do is run head on to Robbie Ray. I feel yeah. like I'm going to look real silly when that's over. Yeah, he's a tough guy to target against. I think he he's sort of better stacking against like than trying to pick a one-off because if he's on he's just going to mow through everyone and yeah he's, I'd, he's I would not want to just have like just McCutcheon or something here yeah uh, if I'm going to do it I want I want the whole thing right so I'm not I'm not advocating for a stack against the Giants but just in general with with a guy like Ray who's such a power pitcher when he gets hit he gets hit really hard yeah so and then for the Diamondbacks, it's going to happen again for me today, just by the way that I can look at the data. Mm-hmm. I had like an overwhelming amount of Kettle Marte yesterday. <laughs> That's always fun. Yeah, uh, he had like 14 or 15 fantasy yeah. points, so it shook out for me. But it kept popping up, and I was like, 
Uh, okay. <laughs> Is this the direction we want to go? Because I'm not super stoked about it. But, um, you know, ultimately I'm okay with it. Uh, but I can see right away that he's going to come up as like a one-off second baseman outside of my stacks. And I'm not... I don't, I'm not as confident today, but, you know, it's Andrew Suarez, a guy that didn't even make the player pool for today, so I can't be too upset with it. I'll probably end up with a little bit of him. I'll probably have some Goldschmidt. I'll probably have some Pollock. Um, I don't think that their prices are the best. They don't create, like, the most value, but if this is a lineup on FanDuel where I don't have one of the top three pitchers, if, if this is, like, the Wainwright lineup then I can afford to uh, spend a little bit more frivolously on a stack. Um, do you like anything for the Diamondbacks? Goldschmidt, Marte, and Pollock would be the guys that I'm looking at. Okay. Not not great values on DraftKings either, but pretty good hitting weather. And then, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see anything that's telling me that Suarez is some great prospect or great pitcher in the minors or anything. So... Yeah, I guess I should talk about that. Uh, Suarez on Steamer, 7.1 projected Ks per nine, 3.1 walks per nine, 4.1 for FIP. Honestly, that's actually not, like, we're going to look at a lot more pitchers that are worse than that throughout the yeah. day. But this is also a, a different sample size than, uh, you know, this is just minors data. So right. be aware of that. Um, yeah, it's just not, with that implied total, not the best game. Agreed. We're passing on the Indians Tigers, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah, Indians Tigers lands in no man's land for both of these slates. So unless you're uh, one of those crazies playing the all day FanDuel slate, apologies to you guys for not getting to the Indians Tigers game. But we'll uh, transition to Orioles Blue Jays and then and the main slate. Uh, Orioles four point five implied total. Blue Jays four point three. Uh, it's a fifty two percent chance to win for the Orioles. Kevin Gaussman going for Baltimore, Marco Estrada going for the Jays, and let me change these times so that we can look at just the night games. I have a feeling we're going to like Gaussman. Yeah, really like Gaussman. Um, really like the price. Yeah. So he's, he's 6000 on DraftKings. I guess it's just too cheap for a guy that He's going to be favored. Uh, he's shown really good strikeout stuff. Maybe not as much this year. He's had a couple of tough matchups, but both in, in both of those matchups, he had a good swinging strike rate. Um, survived against the Yankees last start in Yankee Stadium. The whiffs look good to me. Um, I'm hoping Caleb Joseph is um, is catching for Gaussman. Yeah. because he does call a much better game for him. And I'm not the first person to pick up on this in the industry. But this is kind of a thing that, that people know now that you want Gaussman with um, with Joseph catching yeah. because he just is a, he's a better pitch framer. He calls a better game, calls Gaussman's best pitch more often. And then the Jays are top seven in O swing percentage and swinging strike rate in the MLB so far. So they've not shown great plate discipline either. Yeah, he looks he looks great on DK. That's an that's a perfect price for him. Makes for a great second pitcher. Uh, doesn't have the same sort of luxury for price on FanDuel. I like him, but he kind of blends in a little bit more. Uh, there's a cheaper guy that I prefer that obviously is standing out like a sore thumb on mine, which would be Wheeler. Uh, but I'd be more likely to be paying up for you know one of the bigger dudes today in the main slate. Yeah, but I think he looks great as the the second banana on DK. Yeah, I I love him here. So I don't I don't know how I'm gonna make a lineup without him in it. Yeah, so. that makes perfect sense to me. Um, Orioles bats, I'm I'm in for whatever basically. Uh, I I don't love all of the righty righty out of the gate. Uh, they look really nice on DK. Um, Machado's getting them pretty costly, but you know you're obviously getting. A high end bat there. Uh, I don't have any problem stacking one to six Orioles. Um, I would be surprised if they went Alvarez, Chris Davis, back to back lefties, but that's what I had earlier this morning. So we'll see. Um, but I'd be I'd be cool with all of that. What about you? Uh, I'm not as crazy about the Orioles bats here. Okay, they, they've shown really bad plate discipline just as a team. Um, a lot of righties in this lineup, so. 
I don't know. I think Estrada could be actually okay here. I don't really want to play him at 8,500 on the road in a in a good hitter's park. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think Estrada can just be okay here. So I don't know that I'm looking to stack up the Orioles. The one guy is Machado. Yeah. And then after that, I would, I'd probably go Machado, Scope would be the two guys that I'm looking at just for their prices and them both being – Pretty good hitters. Uh, no, I'm with you. Uh, they won't be my first stack, but I, I do like them. If that four and a half run implied total stays there or even bumps up slightly, uh, I think they might look pretty nice. Um, Estrada with the projected five FIP from Steamer. So I'm betting on the bad version of Estrada here. That's that's, that's my fair. hope. Yeah. So I. I'd like. I want to know where Alvarez and Chris Davis end up shaking out in this, because if we can get one of those bats into like the two hole, I mean maybe not the two hole because that would be moving Machado, but you know up the order right. <laughs> as a lefty righty matchup. I would like. I would like one of those guys to get a little bit higher up. Uh, do you yeah. have anything in for the Blue Jays? Um, just smoke. Okay. Yeah, I, I like smoke for forty nine hundred as a leverage play. I'm guessing Gaussman's going to be pretty popular here. Yeah. I think he should be popular here. So Smoke would be the one guy I'd leverage Gaussman with. Uh, I would agree. I'd be fine with uh, Granderson as well, particularly mm-hmm. if he leads off. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't, yeah, okay. Granderson for 3,400 too. Yeah. Just, you know, you always want to get Granderson in a matchup if he can lead off and be, and have a, a lefty-righty matchup. But nothing crazy for the Blue Jays. I, don't, I won't have any, like, Donaldson or anything. <coughs> Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Phillies and Reds. Phillies 4.2 run implied total. Reds 3.9. Uh, 54% chance to win for the Phillies. Uh, Nick Pavetta going for Philadelphia. Luis Castillo going for the Reds. Um, both of these guys are just sort of like meh in the middle tier of all of the pitching. They don't, they just, they grade out like relatively neutral. The game looks relatively neutral. Um, I'd be shocked if I ended up with either of them as pitching options. Um, you can make a case for either one, and I'd, I'd be fine with it, but I'd rather just ignore them both. Um, I like Castillo. Okay. Like I, I'm always looking to to play this guy. He's just got a devastating changeup. Um, all the advanced stuff we're looking for, like the swinging strike rate, the whiff per swing rate. And when he puts it together for a start, he, and he hasn't really yet, in his short time in the majors, like he, he's going to be a guy that that's going to reach the 30 point upside. And sure. when you can get him at 7,700, yeah, it's not a perfect matchup, but it's only 50 degrees. Uh, the run total for the Phillies is only 4.2 right now that I'm seeing. So I'm sure you got somewhere around there. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean like Santana and Hoskins are scary, but there are some strikeouts in this lineup. Definitely. At least, towards the bottom of the order. So if Castillo's on, he could definitely have a huge, huge outing here. And for 7,700, I'm, I'm willing to take that chance on DraftKings. Yeah, like, that's, I just, I'm, I'm just totally indifferent on both of these guys. Like, I, I really prefer Wheeler today. So I would drop down to Wheeler if I were on DK or particularly on FanDuel. And I'd be more comfortable, like, grabbing... Gaussman and a bigger pitcher on DK, so he he's just kind of falling in like no man's land for me. Um, okay, I don't have a That's problem fair. with it. It's just like it's it's almost like this gray area where like I don't even see that middle of the box on my screen. That's just like there's the top chunk of pitchers, there's the guys that grayed out in bright green for me, and then everybody else is just kind of this mishmash of letters in the middle of it all. One of those, I I fully expect one of these guys to have a really monstrous game. That like hardly anybody has a part of. Okay, yeah, and then Pavetta, he was really awesome his last start. Yeah. I'm guessing he's going to get some ownership because of that, because of the under four total for Cincinnati. And I think he's a pretty good pitcher, but if he's going to be chalky, then I'm probably going to just fade it out of principle. Um, I, I just can't expect him to really mow through this lineup, even though it's there's not a ton we're scared of. Maybe outside of Votto and Scooter Jeanette, but I'm kind of yeah. cool with a, a red stack, particularly on Fanduel. I would go one, two, three, four on the Reds. Uh, it's 
it's going to be very contrarian with that run yeah. total. Uh, but getting to go lefty, righty, lefty, lefty, I don't mind the righty being, you know, a short, a low priced shortstop play. Like if he's just, if Peraza is just going to be part of that stack, I can, I can get behind that. And then that'll like grabbing that reds portion would allow me to pay up to anything I wanted elsewhere. But that is a very, very, very big lottery ticket. Yeah, I don't mind it either. It's just the 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 bat thing just syncs up perfectly for me. They're not they should not be expected to be going like absolutely bananas. It's not with a three point nine implied total. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you like any of the Phillies bats? Um, Santana and Hoskins. Okay. And then Nick Williams. Sorry, I didn't I didn't know if he was going to be in the lineup, but it looks like he's projected to be. So when Castillo gets wild, he gets pretty wild, and he's going to put guys on base and. He's going to make mistakes when he's not on his A or B game. So I would even make a case for a Philly stack, especially if Castillo is going to be popular. Like, I'd much rather play Castillo. I play one lineup, so I'm probably not going to have any Phillies. Sure. But, um, yeah, just making that point that when he gets wild, you, you want to stack against wild pitchers, and, and he's one that can definitely put guys on base and, and make mistakes that go in the seats. I'm with you. Moving on to my pitcher of, of choice from the value perspective. Uh, Marlins and the Mets. Marlins with a 3.8 run implied total. Mets, 4.7. It's a 59% chance to win for the Mets. Uh, Jarlin Garcia going for Miami. Zach Wheeler going for the Mets. And I've said it a couple times, but I'm going to have a bundle of Wheeler today. Uh, I wanna, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Wheeler. I don't. I haven't seen much on Wheeler. Um, I did read something yesterday that said that he changed his delivery in the minors um, early this year in spring training. So, like that run total looks good for Miami. He's going to be a guy that I have to look into a little bit more. I know he was. Like, he's a guy with with big promise, right? Yeah. So, like this guy's supposed to be good at some point. He just hasn't really been yet. Um, but. For 7,500 against this bad Marlins team, I'm willing to at least consider it. So I guess I don't have a strong take on him. Okay. Just yet. probably have to do some more digging later in the day. Yeah, I'm on him on FanDuel because $6,000 price point against a Marlins lineup that does not exactly uh, put fear into my life. Other other than Justin Bauer, um, I don't really have much of a problem. You know, he's going to be an issue. 2200 on FanDuel for Bauer, actually. Uh, I oddly like that way more than I want to. But I'm going to have Wheeler a bundle. That price point is just way too low for a guy with that sort of matchup right now. Marlins implied total of 3.8, third lowest in the main slate. So I kind of want to take advantage of that. Um, and that I just at 6000 it's... He's going to make basically any sort of bat combination that I want work. And yes. I love it. Yeah, 7,500 on DraftKings when not as important. So might be a guy that I just monitor and wait and see with, just especially, especially because I like Gaussman a little bit lower and Castillo for a little bit more. And then also Tanaka for yeah. more. So um, probably going to stay away, but definitely worth um, a guy. Or definitely worth some digging into at least. Yeah, he's a much better play on FanDuel because of the value of the win in this particular matchup. Yeah. Um, and I'm perfectly okay with a nice Mets stack of bats as well. Me too. Who, who are the guys you like specifically? Uh, love Cespedes. Yeah. Uh, Wilmer Flores is 2,200 hitting in the three hole on FanDuel, at least 2,200. 3,000 on DK. Uh, I'm in for Todd Frazier, 3,500 on both sites. Uh, he's, a, he's a better play on DK, I would say, than on FanDuel, but still. Um, I don't love the idea of having Conforto as the leadoff in a lefty-lefty, but I'll take my chances. At least he's going to get the extra plate appearances in that scenario. Um, I wouldn't expect Garcia to like, you know, run through the order a bundle of times, so I don't want to overreact too much to that lefty-lefty at the top. But I'd go... No problem going one to five on FanDuel. I don't have as much interest in Travis Darnod 
on FanDuel, but I'd, you can go one to six on DK, and I'd be perfectly okay with that. Yeah, one to six is what I'm looking at as well. Conforto will probably be a little bit contrarian, but like you said, he's probably only going to see Garcia a couple times, yeah. and then he, he's not a guy that's going to go deep, hasn't started yet this year. So doubt he goes super deep, and then I do love Cespedes, one of my top plays on the slate, Yeah, um, as well as Estrubal Cabrera for 3,200 on DraftKings, just coming off a double dong game. And then Todd Frazier for 3,500. Um, Flores, all these guys crush lefties. And if they're going to see him a couple times, then I really, really like him a lot. And they're not bad against righties either. It's not like you, you have to stay away from any righty-righty matchup for any of those guys. So, Yeah, I hate focusing on the Mets because I hate every other team in the NL East, but got to do it tonight. Don't yeah. have a choice. Anything yeah, else you absolutely. wanted to touch on here? No. Um, just really like Mets bats in this game. Sure. All right. Red Sox and Yankees. Uh, Red Sox 4.1 run implied total. Uh, Yankees 3.9. 52% chance to win for the Red Sox. Um, David Price going for Boston, Masahiro Tanaka going for the Yankees. It's obviously a big time pitching game. Um, you know, we're going to get two top flight starters going here, which is usually the case in a Red Sox Yankees game, or at least it used to be. Uh, mm-hmm. I greatly prefer Price here on FanDuel to Tanaka, and I would probably prefer Tanaka greatly to Price on DK. So I don't really know how we want to go about talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah price is really he's off the table i think for me on DraftKings. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not play, paying close to 12k for him no. against all these righties I, I get it he can strike some of them out he can strike a lot of them out but if he makes a mistake against judge and stan and sanchez it's it's going a long way even in 45 degree weather yeah. so um no price for me you're basically uh paying a chris sale price for David Price, and I'm I'm not comfortable doing that against the Yankees. Um, gives up a ton of hard contact to righties, and I actually prefer some of the Yankees bats over Price. So. Okay, yeah, I, and I totally get that. His price on DK is eleven nine. Tanaka is nine three. On yeah. Fanduel, Tanaka is three hundred dollars more expensive than Price. So you just it, it's it's comically different on DraftKings how you just can't touch David Price today with any confidence. Right. Uh, I don't mind having Price on FanDuel as the fourth most expensive pitcher on the night. Like that. That's at, he gets to a price at that point where I'm interested, particularly as a slight favorite. You know, I got I'll I'll take that when I can get it on FanDuel. Mm-hmm. Um, but you made a great point about Yankees bats, particularly Judge Stanton and Sanchez, like. That's some scary stuff uh, as a lefty, even if you are David Price. Yeah. So those are the three guys that I like. Um, I don't know that I'm necessarily looking to stack them, but all individually good prices. I don't have a um, a clear preference. I guess Sanchez for 3900 at at a catcher position that's usually pretty weak. Yeah. The guy that I like on DraftKings. And they look a lot better on DK than they do on FanDuel. Stanton actually has the same price on FanDuel as he does on DK. Judge is $500 more expensive on FanDuel. So I don't get the sense that I'm going to have any Yankees bats. Um, I don't really get the sense that I'm going to have any Red Sox bats either. Uh, I just don't love the pricing for anybody in this game. Um, so I'll have some price as my pitcher. But I'm not really married to much in this game. On FanDuel, at least, I just don't love the pricing. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Two good pitchers. So uh, I love Tanaka in this game. Um, He's just been a beast this year in his first couple starts. Everything lines up for him, again, to have another solid outing. Um, It's good weather, um, which is crucial at this time in the year. The K upside isn't huge against Boston in general, but Tanaka's a guy with one of the better pitches in the MLB. Yeah. Uh, that that splitter sinker, whatever you want to call it. Um, so he could mow down this lineup. I mean, you've got a couple tough outs in Betts and Benintendi. Um, but there are some strikeouts toward the bottom of that order. So I really, really like Tanaka for 9,300 here. Yeah. 
outside of the pitching, I'd rather just watch this game and enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> than have anybody on my roster. Yep. All right, so this should be the probably the more most popular game in the late slate. Rangers and Angels. Uh, Rangers with a 5.3 run implied total. Angels 5.2, rounding it off to 50-50 for this one. Uh, Matt Moore on the hill for Texas. Jamie Beret going for uh, the Angels. And I don't really care for any pitching. I hope that you don't. <laughs> yeah, no pitching here for me either. Um this is all know, sticks. This, yeah, this is like Baria. He seems like he's okay. He's known for his command from what I'm reading. Uh, Three-pitch mix, low 90s fastball, deceptive changeup, and then some sort of breaking ball Yeah, that's 82 to 83 miles an hour. I don't know. I mean, this is a really tough spot. There's some wind blowing in from right field, but I'm really not scared of that for – any of these hitters no like, th- th- this is going to be like you said probably the most popular game so you can talk about the bats you like if you want yeah and just a quick note on baria 6.0 projected k rate from steamer which is about as low as you'll ever see on here uh three walks per nine and a 557 fip no thank you both guys over five in their projected fips so um Rangers bats, uh, obviously Chu, Gallo, Mazzara, grabbing three lefties there would be great. You can stack one to five on FanDuel and be stoked about it. You can go one to nine on DK if you'd like. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in Robinson Chirino just because, you know, I don't, it's just not the spot for me. I don't need the righty, righty catcher option here, but I'd be fine with it in part of a stack. There's no limit to the amount of guys you could have from the Rangers. And for the most yeah. part, I feel the same way about the Angels. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll start with the Angels. So I like the top three right off the bat. Yeah. Pujols, I always say this, but I, I'm not really looking to play him um, at, at a first base position that's usually pretty deep. I think tonight might um, be that spot, though. Yeah, for 3600 he makes sense with all the other guys being a little bit more expensive ahead of him. Um Anderson Simmons for 3,500 is also a guy that people really don't like to play, but he hits lefties pretty well. Yeah. And Matt Moore is not even a good lefty. No, he's not. So I like the Angel stack. I like the Rangers stack um, with Chu, Gallo, um, really those top five for Texas. Chu, Gallo, Mazzara, uh, Andrews, and Beltre all seem underpriced on DraftKings. Yeah, it's a it's a sea of green here for me. Um, you really can't go wrong if you just want to throw darts at my spreadsheet. Uh, you're bound to hit a name that projects pretty well today. Uh, yeah. I don't love Angleton Simmons' price on Fanduel, but if that's how far down I need to get into like a, a talking point, it's basically just saying you're good to grab whatever you would like. <laughs> yeah, there's just seems like a ton of good options in this game on both sides. Yeah, I'm I'm just in the the amount of ownership that I'll have to both of these teams is going to be staggering. Yeah, uh, you'll see. I uh, get ready to see uh, some Rangers and Angels hitters in a spotlight hitters or spotlight stacks article yeah. coming soon yeah. to an awesomeo.com near you. Yeah, exactly. In the same way. Yeah, and I'm gonna assume that uh, their pitchers aren't gonna make it into a spotlight pitchers article. <laughs> no, they will not. They will not be there. They're going to turn the spotlight off. <laughs> Cubs and Pirates, 4.9 uh, implied total for the Cubs, 3.6 for the Pirates. Uh, 63% chance to win for Chicago. John Lester on the hill and Stephen Brault going for the Pirates. Uh, I like Lester a lot, particularly on FanDuel. Um, I'd be more than okay having him be my top line starter. I like him more than Tanaka. I like him more than Price. Um where, are you looking at Lester at all? I'm I'm really not. And the, you know, I, Lester's a good real life pitcher. Doesn't have huge upside in, um, in terms of the DraftKings scoring. I think he's decently likely to get a win. But I I think I'd rather have some of these Pirates bats at the top. And that's be mostly because Lester really has trouble with when guys get on base. And like Josh Harrison, if he's leading off for 3,700, is a guy that I really like. At second base, and then uh, Starling Marte also 
at 4,500. Just the, the speed guys at the top of the Pirates lineup. Um, and then if Polanco's hitting somewhere in the top four or five, that'd be another guy that I'm looking at, even lefty-lefty. So yeah. I don't know. I'm, I don't really like playing Lester in in fantasy. Um, I'd much rather pay down for Tanaka on DraftKings, pay down for Gaussman, pay down for Castillo. Yeah, so I don't mind Lester's price because they're all pretty compact on FanDuel. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to go to like Tanaka on DK just because Lester's $1,400 more expensive than him. So the pricing brings you to some some very clearly different options on DraftKings. Uh, I really like, maybe not really like, but I like the Cubs bats, particularly the top four, well, top five. Uh, Well, top six. (laughs) Um, Pirates bats, it's not going to be a direction I go because I'll probably have a bundle of Lester. But I get the idea of grabbing all of those righty bats. And, you know, if if guys get on against Lester, that's going to be some real trouble. Um, So I'm not as confident in it. It's more of a price play for me than anything else. He's not. He's just with the rest of the pack, and I'm willing to take that chance on that 3.6 implied total, which is is quite low for the main slate. Yeah, uh, I love the Cubs here. So Brault is a guy that's given up 41% hard contact against righties, um, dating back to last year. 5.45 xFIP. Um, I just don't think he's a very good pitcher. He can't really strike out righties. Can't really strike out anyone. So Chris Bryant, one of my favorite plays in the slate. Wilson Contreras, probably my top catcher on this slate. And then I like Addison Russell a lot for 3,700. Albert Almora for 3,100, some value as an outfielder. I prefer Zobrist against um, right-handed pitchers, but I'm guessing we're going to see one at some point here because I think they knock out Brault pretty early. The only concern is the weather, but there is a little bit of wind blowing out to left. So that that um, combats that a little bit for me. I think I can just see these righties just crushing balls out to left off brawl. Yeah, um, you can't you can't go wrong grabbing a ton of Cubs. Second highest, well, the highest implied total of the non Rangers Angels games tonight. Uh, they should be pretty popular. Not a lot of fear coming into uh, coming from Stephen Brault. So. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up with the top four of the Cubs in a, a real healthy amount of lineups. And I probably won't have much of anything from the Pirates. Uh, it's just not really a direction I want to go. Maybe some Starling Marte, but I'd, I'd be I'd be very shocked if I had these guys more than like one or two lineups out of a group of 150. Yeah. So Dodgers A's is not on the DraftKings main slate, right? It's not? Uh, uh, well, maybe maybe I should should have skipped that sentence. Uh, let me see. I thought it wasn't, but maybe there were I, so I many check. different like little things for me to click on on DraftKings. I'm pulling it up now. Um, if it's not, then it's not. Is it really? Yeah, there's a Wait. so DK's main slate is six games tonight. It stops after Angels Rangers. Oh, or okay. Pirates Cubs, I guess. Oh, I like that. Okay, that's so. Um... Dodgers A's is, I guess, just simply a. I mean, it exists in a later slate. I don't know. Did you look at it? Yeah, I did. I didn't yeah. even. I didn't realize that. But. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll be brief. Um, Four point two implied total for the Dodgers. Three point one for the A's. Sixty three percent chance to win uh, for the Dodgers. Alex Wood going for Los Angeles. Daniel Mengden going for Oakland. Uh, Mengden is not someone that I'm going to be anywhere near. Alex Wood, I think, looks pretty nice on FanDuel. I would not pay the price for him on DraftKings. Um, And the 3.1 run implied total uh, for the A's is the lowest of the entire main slate. Um, Yeah, so Wood is a guy I was just going to write off because he's 11,400 on DraftKings. Um, I didn't know this game wasn't on the slate, so I was just going to say Tanaka, Gaussman, Castillo, so works out perfectly uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not I'm not crazy about Wood's price. Uh, it is better on Fanduel, but I'd still prefer Tanaka and um, or paying down for one of those other guys I mentioned. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really want to target against Alex Wood. He's a good pitcher. He doesn't usually go too deep. Uh, Dave Roberts doesn't really let him go too deep. So I think you can make a case for. Like Chris Davis, one off, 
but that that team total is really low. Yeah, I'm not touching here. any part of the A's. Yeah, and then if um, Magnin's fine, but he's uh, th- this is a tough Dodgers lineup, even though they have not been hitting well. So I think this is a game that could bust out a little bit. Magnin's not a guy with swing and miss stuff. No. So it would be the top five for me. Taylor, Seager, um, Bellinger, I love for 3,900. Yeah. Um, if you're somehow playing the slate on DraftKings and it's a normal slate. So those would be the guys that I'm really looking at. And then Grandal and Puig, if you're stacking it up. Yeah, I'll have a decent stack of Dodgers. Uh, the top three in particular are grayed out really well for me. And I would comfortably go all the way down to Grandall with no problem. Yeah, so any absolutely. sort of combination there is fine by me. Um, I just, I, I will not sniff a single A. So. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's a it's really low total and stuff. So <clears throat> I get just writing off the A's here. I don't think they're going to go off. Anyone's going to hit two home runs or something. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. That's a big that's, slate. That's, that's yeah. 14 games that we just looked at, which was <laughs> a lot. Is, is that all? Yeah. Uh, um, since the slate, so, yeah, since the slate is split, you know, down the middle, uh, I'm not going to run four separate runs of uh, Fantasy Cruncher right now <laughs> for early and late on both sites. So if anybody has any questions about guys that I'm looking for, uh, you know, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I'll be around all day. Um, we'll have articles up and rankings up for both the early slate. We probably only articles for the main slate, but rankings will be up for the early slate. Yeah. Uh, they might even be up right now. I have no idea how uh, quickly he got them up. Um, anything you want to touch on? Any hockey tonight? Yeah, there's hockey tonight. Uh, Stanley Cup playoffs start tonight. Three game slate. So not a huge slate, but it it should be fun to watch and yeah. it'll be fun to play DFS. So look out for the uh, spotlight plays and the stacks that are coming out around four eastern there you go i've got the final night of the nba regular season tonight um i will be looking at it i'm not going to be excited to play it if you look through all the value guys from yesterday it's just a sea of guys from three thousand dollars to forty five hundred which makes me want to pull my hair out but i will be eating some chick-fil-a on the live stream tonight as paid for by Chris Spaggs, which makes me happy. And spoiler alert, if you saw the live stream last night, I won another bet against him because this dude can't stop losing bets to me. <laughs> um, just way better at betting him than he is. So come check out how that gets paid off tonight. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. last night of the basketball season for me, I can't wait. We'll be making the transition to playoff basketball, but at least we can talk about like real games and real players at that point. So that's all I've got. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, channel's growing great. Thank you guys so much for all of the support. The views have been climbing every day, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We're really happy about that. So best of luck tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Good luck tonight, guys, and today.